Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week we have the world's first smart bike integrating Amazon Alexa, four new high-tech wonder materials that could revolutionize cycling, as well as your upgrades and the bike vault. Nice, let's get cracking. Let's do it. John Cannings isn't here this week, but he's got a good excuse because he's in Australia looking for the latest World Tour bike tech. So stay tuned for our guide to the 2019 World Tour bikes, which he's doing at the Tour Down Under. I can't nice. wait for that. A bit closer to home though, right. Helford, the UK retailer, have announced the world's first connected smart bike, which has access to Amazon's Alexa. Yeah, the company's called Cybike, and their top of the range model is called the E-Legend, and the head of Halfords uh, is quoted as saying, we've seen innovations in alternative commuting go from strength to strength. And after electric bikes, we predict that the next big trend for commuters will be smart bikes. Mm. They are including lots of functions which will be useful to urban riders, such as turn-by-turn -turn navigation, traffic and weather updates, lighting settings, and well, pretty much anything Alexa can do, including music. So on your ride home, you could order your favorite takeaway and tell Alexa to put the kettle on in time for when you get back. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Sounds what, ideal, doesn't it? Where do I order? <laughs> in addition to that, this bike has all the features you would expect. Performance data such as speed, time, distance, GPS, mapping, and some that you might not expect, such as a security lock, which can be accessed via the bike's app, um, theft tracking, an alarm, Vodafone SIM, HD music player, and Wi-Fi. Blimey. I mean, that sounds pretty good, but a, a little bit alarming. It's not just on. Not just cause the alarm, because, well, Alexa now knows not everything you say and do when you're at home, but if you've got this bike, it also knows where you go, when you go there, and what you do and say when you go in those places. I mean, yeah. it's kind of like, Skynet, isn't it? If I don't, I don't think Sarah and Connor's going to be buying one of these. It's tin hat stuff, isn't it? But I think it's pretty <laughs> cool. Anything that makes commuting more accessible and functional for the average person out there, surely it's not a bad thing. Yeah, it's it's a good vote in my book as well. I agree. And the makers are looking to distribute this throughout the rest of the world too. But initially, the UK distribution. Um, is set to be available in summer of 2019. Yeah, just don't expect it to be a featherweight racing machine. I reckon it'll be 30 kilos looking at it. It's got a motor though, so it's all right. Oh, nice. Last week, we asked you what tech you'd like to see in 2019. As ever, thanks for all your great comments, and we're gonna read a few of them out here. Here we go up first is Todd Taylor. I don't need any new tech for 2019. I just need the tech that already exists to become more affordable. I'd like to buy a power meter and a disc brake equipped Trek Madon, but I'd rather not sell a kidney for either. Interestingly, we had a look at the price of black market organs yeah, and a kidney is about ten thousand yeah. dollars so that would pretty much buy you a power meter and a trek madon yeah there are just about there are better organs to sell you yeah. can get more money for different things well and you can sell your eyeballs that's about another another grand yeah you get some wheels to go on your trek madon as yeah. well good luck let us know how you get on with it. oh you won't be able to because you won't be able to type into the comments yeah well you can sell your scalp as well yeah you'd get probably more money for your scalp than most people i reckon a lot of people would want your scalp false economy a lot of money on hair gel yeah, well, there you go. Well, anyway, we also had a great comment from Jer. Ooh, wireless shifting from Shimano. I yeah. like that one. Yeah, uh, well, I think everyone wants wireless. It's interesting though. I don't know if we are actually gonna see it. No, but I mean, to be fair to them, their stuff works as well as it is, doesn't it? Yeah, but well. It would look better with Will Shimano go wireless? We don't know. Um, and Alice Cycle commented saying, he just wants to see a better GoPro mount that can fit the larger oval-shaped carbon road handlebars that the puny round mounting system won't fit. And he said he got no response from the makers of GoPro when he suggested it to them. There are ways around that one though, aren't there, Ollie? Well, there are. I mean, I can totally relate to this. Um, a lot of you commented previously when we were filming in Alta Badia and I had to resort to just simply sort of taping a GoPro with some bright red insulation tape onto mm. the mic. Canyon Airbar. It's a bit of a first world problem though. I read once that yeah. actually the best GoPro mounts are the ones you make yourself. Well. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> right. On to the rest of the show. 
This look at Future Tech got us thinking about, well, what else is out there? So we did a bit of research and we came across four exciting high-tech new, well, wonder materials that could completely change cycling in the future. Starting with thermal tech then, and this is a patented lightweight fabric made from 100% stainless steel mesh with a solar selective coating. The fabric is excellent at absorbing heat in the form of UV lighting and conducting and dispersing this throughout the entire material. Yeah, it's also said to offer a huge amount of insulation for relatively low bulk. So this makes it particularly exciting for the sort of minimalist clothing we use for winter cycling uh, compared to something like skiing. And the makers reckon that it offers 25% more insulation than a traditional jacket. And well, it's, it's also a flexible fabric as well. Hang on though, if it gets its heat from the sun and UV lighting, does presumably it's really cold in the dark? Well. Apparently not. Apparently, once the sun goes down, it's able to absorb heat from your body and heat itself up that way. And it can also thermoregulate as well. So it stops you overheating because it can dissipate the excess heat um, that you generate as well. Nice. Pretty cool. That. Yeah. And it's not just science fiction because back in 2016, there was an Indiegogo uh, page set up to fund a jacket made using this material. And it met its funding target and apparently you can buy it. Well, I guess it's only a matter of time until we see if this works its way into the cycling world. Yeah, well, I imagine it is, yeah. Exciting. Nice. Next up, we have self-healing polymers. Now, these are still in an early stage at the moment, but they have extraordinary promise, and we fully expect to see lots of applications for these in the future. So scientists at MIT, which is in Boston, have reportedly developed an elastic polymer that is able to self-heal and repair itself when it's been cut or torn. Yeah, it's genius. And it does this by absorbing carbon from the atmosphere, which has a posh phrase, sequestering, apparently. I know. Ah. Uh, and the process is apparently quite similar to the way that plants absorb CO2 um, during photosynthesis as well. Yep. And that's gonna be good for the environment, isn't it? Yeah, well, anything that reduces CO2 is gonna be cool. But what are the actual cycling applications for this? Well, I think the first one, the most obvious one for me, would be something like tires. Imagine yeah. tires that if they get cuts or slices in them, they can just heal up and repair themselves. That'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, it'd make life a lot easier. Yeah. What about screens on your computer? Yeah, or your phone. Yeah, they could do with a self-healing screen. Yeah, you could have a screen that just, when you crack your phone screen or your computer screen, it can repair itself. Be awesome. Engineers at the Sandia National Laboratory have created a new alloy made from a combination of gold and platinum. Gonna be cheap then. Yeah, well, maybe not, <laughs> but it is said to be 100 times more wear resistant than your general hardened tool steel. Wow. Which I think is pretty impressive. And yeah. that puts it into the same category as diamond. Yeah, that. Although not quite as hard as diamond, it is more abrasion resistant than other alloys. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, imagine if you made cassettes or chains or drivetrain components out of that stuff, or even just coated in it, it would be, well, it'd last far longer than any currently existing drivetrain components you'd imagine. You'd imagine so, yeah. 10% gold and 90% platinum. Is it harder than Chuck Norris, though? Oh, that's gonna be close. Really? No. Yeah. Lastly, we have a special coating that can be applied to glass to block sunlight. So coatings that can tint glass already exist and are controlled by electricity. But scientists at RMIT, which is in Australia, have developed something which is arguably superior in that it's able to regulate its transparency by itself. Isn't it just a light reactive lens that's been around for years though? People have been wearing them for a while. Well, they have been around for a long time, but this isn't a coating that simply lightens and darkens. It actually switches from completely transparent to a mirrored finish, which is pretty cool. And yep. it does this uh, because it's made from vanadium dioxide. Now I'm gonna get nerdy chemistry nerd on you now, okay? So vanadium dioxide is a special compound and at 67 degrees, uh, the electrons within uh, vanadium dioxide are able to flow, flow freely. And in doing so, they release energy, which can be seen in the form of the material switching from transparent to mirrored. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know you did. Yeah. I was explaining it to them. <laughs>
But that would be really cool if you could get them into a pair of cycling glasses. Yeah, no, it would be absolutely awesome if you could have glasses. I mean, like, you know, if, when you're descending and you go through tunnels, I mean, you've got experience of that. It's like... You would no longer just have to hope for survival. Yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. Yeah, awesome. Nice. But as ever, we want to know what you're most excited about and also the tech that you would like to see and the things that could make the biggest difference to your cycling. So... John Dang. Let us know in the comments. It's now time for Screw Riding Upgrades by Upgrades, where you submit pictures before and after of your bike or upgrades for a chance to win the ultimate prize, the GCN Capron. Hang on a minute, where's the, where is the Capron? You said you were bringing it. I've got it here, guys. Ah, oh, nice. What are you doing down there? Thanks, suggestion boy. Right. Anyway, last week was Fred from New Jersey who had this incredible homemade smart trainer. And we really enjoyed this comment, actually. I wonder if Fred, with the homemade Swift trainer, could come and have a look at my Wi-Fi, please. Yeah, that's a good comment, that. Good try. Uh, he was up against Tim from Royal Wooden Bassett, who had his pink Elo Velo bike. So, who was the... Uh, Drum roll for the winner! And that was Fred with a whopping 71% of the vote. Wow, it's a massive landslide, that. So, uh, yeah, just... Uh, Capron's in the post. I'll get Suggestion Boy to... He comes around and delivers it personally. To post it out for you. And also, don't forget to have a look at that Wi-Fi connection for uh, for Andy as well. Right, this week we, we have... Robert in Colorado, who has upgraded his Specialized Tarmac SL4. To save some money, Robert purchased an older Specialized Tarmac SL4 with plans to purchase upgraded components over the period of a year. A year later, this is the result. The main upgrades included Shimano R8000 crankset, old Tegra chain, S-Works carbon seat post, specialized Power Pro saddle, S-Works Aerofly carbon handlebars, specialized comp multi-stem, and Roval CLX64 wheel set. Oof, that is work. nice, isn't it? He's done a good job, I like that. That is seriously smart, and also, well, a really sensible way of doing it. Save yeah. money is buying an older model and then tarting it up with a plan to upgrade it. Yeah. Nice work. Yeah, Big fan of that. Um, well, he's up against Joseph from Cleethorpes. Now, if you've never been to Cleethorpes, it's like a far nicer version of Colorado and it's got better fish and chips too. So, you know, book your next holiday there. Now Joseph bought his bike at a charity auction. It had no distinctive markings, so he made it his own. Um, it was a bit rusty and needed a lot of TLC, so me and my dad spent the week cleaning and respraying and upgrading the parts, complete with a custom head badge from the coat of arms of Cleethorpes, which is his hometown. And that's on the seat tube and the head tube. And the group set was upgraded to Shimano 600 and a new racier set of handlebars was also installed. That is very nice. Yeah, there's good color coordination. Yeah, I, the, the way that the brown bar tape and the saddle, I, I love that. You don't see enough uh, brown tape and saddles on bikes these days. But it's no, very it's all smart. black and black, isn't it? Yeah, and also considering how little money has been spent on that bike, it looks very, very nice indeed. Yeah, good work to you, Joseph, and your dad. Yeah, it's a tough one this week, isn't it? Anyway, it's not up to us, Ollie. No, it's not, you're it's right. It's up to you guys. So make sure you vote up there and find out who the winner was next week. Yeah. Bike of the week now. And last week was the incredible Honeycomb Pinarello from Fat Creations. And that was up against the Spray Gold BMC. Yeah, battle of the custom paint jobs. Yeah. And the winner, with a comprehensive 73%, was Fat Creations Pinarello. Nice, I do like that. That is a cracking looking bike, isn't it? So this week, well, we had to do some of the new pro bikes on the World Tour. So many to choose from. Yeah, so excited about those at the moment. And we've put two of our favorites up against each other. So we've got the new Sunweb team bike, well, the Cervelo uh, S5. The funky bars. Yeah, versus the Dimension Data BMC Time Machine TM01. Cav posted a picture of it on Instagram. Nice. Really good. Yeah, you know it's yeah, click yeah. up in that corner. Yeah. Head to head. You decide. It's time for the bike vault. Best time of the week, Ollie. Yeah, it's my favorite part of the show, I think. Yeah, me too. You need to submit your bikes if you want them to be included in the bike vault using the link below for the uploader tool. Yeah, and we judge them to be nice 
Oh, super nice. And what happens if the bike says super nice, Opie? Oh, we get John's little cowbell out. Yeah. And we give it a little ring! You asked for it. I don't, I don't know who's more scary, you or John. John, easily. He's an angry man, Ollie. When he gets his cowbell out. Come on. Okay. First up this week, we have got Roy from Wisconsin in the USA. Now, Roy says that he purchased this frame set and built up his bike in 1975, and now he's restored it in 2018. And he's got complete Campagnolo Super Record um, original group set on there, except the pedals and saddle, which are more modern, um, as he does actually plan on riding it again. And he also sent us a picture of the current state of the bike, but also, I really like this, mm. he sent us a picture of one of him riding it in a race in 1976, and he says this bike has got many memories. Look at that. That is awesome, isn't it? Yeah, this is an easy one for me, Roy. That is one of the coolest things I've seen submitted since I've been on the channel. That is, that is awesome. I love it. I well, think that's really Even cool. though I never even passed. I did, it doesn't even matter. I, w I was in agreement. You know you that John would have given it super you, nice. You knew, you knew I was, yeah. That was, e that was easy, that was easy. Right. I think it's the fact that you've had that bike for so long, actually, that does it for me. And the fact you've looked after it and you've clearly got history with it. I love it. Good it's brilliant. Work. Love it. Next up is Dominico with his Trek Madone in the Puglia countryside. See, I, we, well, we all know how much I love that bike. But, oh, I mean, he's photographed it on the wrong side. Oh, that's minus three it's, points. I mean, it's not, it's on the, the non-drive side. I mean, I do love the Envy wheels he's got in there. Um, they're very, very nice. But what do you think, man? It's the wrong way round. And the crank arm's in the wrong position. You know what, it is actually, it is a really, really nice bike, but because you photographed it the wrong way round. He's just not doing it justice. And because there are no real rules in here. I think that's, I think it's a nice. Yeah. I think it's a nice. All right then, how about Bernard, who's up next with his S-Works, his 2019 S-Works? Well, he's, well, he would be, Ali, he would be so Bernard if he was in the UK, but he's, he's actually in California, so it's Bernard. Sorry, Ollie. Bernard. Aluminium bike, first one of the week. Yeah, well, I love, I love the Specialized LA Sprint, because it's his, it's just, yeah, it's just a great looking frame, isn't it? And that is, you know, those tan sidewalls on there and the-, the Yeah, that works wheels. for me. That's seriously nice. And it's photographed the right way around. He's, well, he's got the, yeah. Come on, let's show some love for alloy bikes. Ah, oh, it's a super nice, isn't it? I, I like the super cast bar tape as well. Anyway, uh, next up we've got Mario. Oh, Mario. Who's in uh, Montclair, New, New Jersey. Uh, and he, well, he says a Christmas present for himself. Good work. He's got a SRAM ETAP, Quark D0 power meter. It's a Venge uh, VIAS. What do you think? I really, oh, I think that's very smart looking by. It's very Christmassy with all the uh, ribbons around it. It is, and he's photographed it well. He's got it in the big, small, the crank arm's in the right place, there's no excess steerer, there's no saddle bag on there. You know, I mean. He's got an ass saver. He has got an ass saver on there, but I think that's a GCN ass saver. I mean, that's the, uh, the height Wait, of he's won the competition, awesomeness. haven't he's Yeah. Um, I mean, I like the way the tyres walls, the red tyre walls match the frame as well, the red on the frame, that's that's pretty cool. Coordination. Yeah, I mean, the one little gripe is that the valves aren't lined up properly. You should see the valves on my bike, Ollie. Yeah, but... Oh, what do you reckon? Super, You're cool. That's a super nice All right, frame. go on then. What do we have next? We have a Felt F65X, which has just been rebuilt. It's from Congleton in Cheshire and it belongs to Pete. Yeah, see what I like about this is that that is just a fully functional, ready to go winter bike. Yeah, that's easy for me. I think that's really cool actually, with a mega long flap on the back as well. He's got all, he's got, I mean, some people go, when they take a picture of their bike, they're like, right, we're gonna remove all the appendages. Yeah. And this just breaks that tradition and says, no, I'm putting all of them on there to show how functional and good my bike is in winter. And we're in winter, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere right now. And I ride to work in the dark and, and home, and I'd love a bike that was, you know, set up so perfectly got to all keep these dry and bright and light, seen and yeah. safe. I mean, and it's, yeah, and he's, and he, but he's still kept the rules because he's got his, you know, his big, small, and the crank arm 
I, that's, a, that's a super nice A one. bell ring for function over fashion? Yes. Nice bite, Pete. Yeah, and lastly, we have got this. Um, it's, From Savas? Yes, in Cyprus. It's a Bianchi Specialissima Jura Ace Di2. Um, um, well, it's in it's in Celeste. Yeah, is that is that okay? Well, I really like Celeste. I mean, um, it's got a filthy chain. John Cannings loves Celeste. No. Like he's, he proper loves it. Yeah. I know he's not here this week, but I think I'm not sure. I that's think the it's only, I, got. I think it's only right that this gets a super nice because even with a chain that dirty. But John Cannings isn't here this week, and he would he would be crying at the screen right now. He's going to be watching this, going, "Oh, but that's a super nice, guys." Mm. So I mean, we kind of have to give it a super nice just for John. Come on, Ollie. Yeah, I know you want to. I can see you've been reaching for it. All this evening. Celeste Bianchi is a super nice, isn't it, John? It's been nice having you on the show, Ollie. Yes. That is it, it is the end of the show. Yeah, but coming up on the channel this week, well, tomorrow we have a, a guide to the 2019 World Tour Bikes, which John is doing down under at the moment. Nice. And we also have on Sunday, and I'm excited about this, Me we're too. gonna be comparing electronic versus mechanical group sets and see which is actually heavier once you factor in all the cables and housings and bits that people don't necessarily always consider. And we've got all the brands as well represented, Shimano, Campag and SRAM, so. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing that. Yeah, it should be good. I don't actually know what the answer is. Ah. Um, that should be good. But also, um, if you've enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and check out the GCN shop. We've got a massive 40% sale on at the moment. Oh, I could do with a new t-shirt. Or a Capron, you can buy them there. Yeah, well. good for cooking. Yeah, right, see you later.